Hello guys, welcome to my channel. If you're a returning visitor, I'm really glad that uh, you're back again. In today's video, we are talking about something new in Substance City Sampler, which is called Text to Pattern. And I'm going to show you what is the difference between Text to Texture and Text to Pattern. It's going to be really interesting, so let's jump into it. The first thing that I wanted to show you is that we have some brand new models on Substance City assets. And this was kind of like my inspiration for this uh, this project that uh, we are going to work on today. I saw this couch and I was like, ooh, ooh, we should create some really cool 3D materials to texture this this couch. So let's see what, what we can create. So here we are in Stager and I just downloaded this 3D model from, from a set and when I drop it to drop it into Stager then I can check the model how many parts is it made of so as you can see we have a frame we have a cushion and we also have these little metal rivets here and then this is also a cushion so basically we need a one fabric material one wood material and the metal for example for these rivets so Let's see how we can create this with a with Substance City Sampler using the text to texture and the text to pattern tools. So I did a little bit of work to save your time so that you don't have to see me working out my prompt in the meanwhile. Um, basically, when you open the generative tab here, you can choose from pattern or texture and I will show you the, the, the difference in a minute what, what is it, the difference between these two types and uh, I just added vintage Victorian flower pattern just to generate something simple and these are the results that I got I think this, this looks or these look already pretty interesting if you go to the history tab you can find all your um, patterns and textures everything that you generated Okay, disclaimer, so the, this part of my first recording uh, got completely lost, so I have to get back and record this again for you guys. Um, so where we, where we lost it at the last uh, part of the tutorial, here are all the images that I generated with uh, the text to pattern tool with Sampler, and some of these look really, really amazing. and. The way I work with this is that you can just drag and drop this image into the layer stack and you can you have to click on use it as a bitmap, bitmap and uh, when you import it nothing happens and you can just add this cloth wave filter and you have to turn on the color custom wave and it's going to immediately use this image for this material and I just max out this number and then you can use the multipliers and you already have a material like this maybe that's better use it a bit less let's zoom in um, I will change the displacement to like 0 0.2 I think that, that will work yeah no 2 um basically it's your decision that how you would like this wave to look like i think this is pretty okay already and we can add the, the channel switch on top i hope it's going to work And when you set it to multiply, then you will have, you can blend your uh, channels together. And I like this color a little bit better. So what we can do is that uh, when we are done with this, we can export the material. We can send it to Painter or Stager. Um, I spoke about this uh, like a million times in every video that I uploaded, but basically you can export it as an SBSR file that later on you can import to Cinema 4D with a single simple drag and drop. You just have to name, name your material and find a, a folder for it and then you can click on export. I exported like 20 of these materials, so I'm not going to export it right now. Let's move on. And let's say that um, I would like to create a mahogany wood 
um, material for this project. Of course, you can go on Substance Media Sets and find your uh, wooden material, but that's not what this tutorial is about. So let's go back to text to texture and just add here mahogany wood dark brown hmm. and let's see what what happens okay so we got this wooden uh, this this material i'm not sure that this is what we exactly want to use but let's try what's happening so um you can yeah and this is already seamless what you got this texture you can use image to material and um, you can upscale the material that we are not going to do now but uh, that is an option to make it more higher higher, higher resolution so we can change this to wood interior lighting i would go for this one for, for this uh, this project Let's change the tiling. Oh, sorry, it was not meant to be. Yeah, like this. Oh, really interesting. Oh, look at all these details. Oh, wow. Okay, I did not ex expect this to happen. So, this might not be the perfect uh, texture for. So this might not be the perfect texture for this exact project, but I really like this. Um, you can change the variation in the material type, for example, that you want to have more variation in the... So you, you would like to have more variations in the, in the roughness and the, the glossiness. There is one more thing that I wanted to show you when it comes to this wooden material. I think it's really really interesting so when you go to the filters and you go to the varnish filter it actually allows us to add a certain finish to our wooden material and if you change this covering thickness then you can blend it together with your material and look at this now we have this painted red painted wooden material i think it's absolutely incredible and you can just change the color to anything like look at this dark dark blue material i think it's really amazing and then you can of course blend it together with your own material so let's try something that is more visible let's maybe make it red again and here you can see that it's blending with our material this mahogany wood that that we created and with these sliders, you can you can edit everything. I think it's really incredible. Look at this. There is something I forgot to mention, and that is exposing parameters. And why is it important is because when we throw these materials uh, as an SVSR file uh, into another CD app, then we can edit these with the uh, with the sliders. These um, these values here so for example i want to expose this uh, the co covering color the covering roughness and here you can see these little dots it will identicate uh, that uh, these are the, the exposed exposed parameters that you can edit later on so what we can do is of course uh, we can send this material to stager as i've been showing this to you before or we can export it as as an SBSR file, or we can export image maps and we can just uh, work with it further in, for example, for example, Cinema 4D. So let's, uh, let's see what, uh, what I created using these materials that we created with uh, the, uh, the AI supported text to texture and text to pattern with sampler. Okay, so um, the last thing that uh, I wanted to add to this uh, to studio when it comes to the, the sampler is that now you can see what is the difference it, between the text to texture and the text to pattern tool so basically when uh, you you would like to generate something that is more like um, organic or something natural looking i would say go with the text to text to texture and if you want to generate something that is more like um, 
towards the direction of, uh, of, of uh, graphic design and shapes, then I would definitely go with the textual pattern because you get more like um, illustrator style uh, images out of out of the text uh, text input so here we are um, in cinema 4d and i what i did is that uh, i just opened this uh, 3d model model in cinema 4d and as you can see uh, i have the exact the same um, parts of this model that i want to edit and these are uh, completely blank at the moment, but if I throw my uh, 3D material here, then, oh, it doesn't give us a preview for some reason. But uh, if I drop it on the mesh, then we already see that uh, this red material arrived frame. Yep, so here we go, you can see, can also fix the UVs a little bit, but anyway, so what I wanted to show you quickly is that if you open these settings, here are all those parameters that, uh, that we exposed, and here we can change the resolution and all the all those parameters that uh, that we wanted to keep editable in sampler so I think it's really really useful so let me quickly finish this uh, this uh, scene and uh, I will show you the final result soon so here we are in cinema 4d I just threw this little scene together that uh, so I can show you what uh, this whole thing is about I just imported this object I throw in the, the materials on them it was a really quick process and I have a, a couple of camera views that uh, I want to show you so for example I framed this image um, so that uh, we can see the wooden material and the fabric material at the same time if uh, redshift Will look down on us then then you will see so here you can see the the fabric material here you can see the wood one wooden one i think they work really 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 well together um after this the after i upload this video i will post all of these pictures to my social media channel so you can check them out and this is my favorite part of this whole render where I think the, the details of the wooden texture is just really showing really, really well. For some reason I have a bug in Cinema 4D that I don't really have any material previews. I tried to update it and everything, it just did not go away. So I really like this, uh, this wooden, wooden textures here. And a little bit of a varnish that I, that I added. So if you click on, the, on this material, I think it's this one. Yeah, here you can see the the things that I changed, and I think the whole thing came came together really, really well. So, if you have any questions about any of this, just uh, leave a comment down below, and I will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Thank you so much for following this tutorial and see you on the next one.